Okay, here we go. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 9, Slice of Life. First off, congratulations on the 100th episode of My Little Pony. <laughs> that is so rare for a children's cartoon. Even rarer for a cartoon that was specifically, quote unquote, marketed towards girls. You are now making me want to check and see how many lo episodes long She-Ra lasted. <laughs> uh, the only show that was specifically focused at girls, I think, like, there's two others, but the big one that stands out to me, because I'm like, that one lasted for that long, was Totally Spies. I think it's like 200 some odd episodes long, and I'm like, what the? You could probably say the same thing about Wings Club. Blech. <laughs> yeah, I would have preferred that if any show was going to be brought back, I would have preferred Witch, because that was a much better show in my opinion. Definitely. And I didn't even watch it that much, and I know it was better. <laughs> All right. Back to the episode of, oh my god, it's nothing but fan service without being etchy. <laughs> I think the proper term is fan pandering. And I don't even know what a bugbear is. I looked it up later. There's a lot of stuff. I'm not quite sure what reference they're going for in this episode, but it can be anything from a type of creature in D&D &D to... I think it's Irish folklore, and it's kind of like the Irish version of the Boogeyman. Well, it couldn't have been that dangerous because, you know, the main six didn't go rainbow-powered or anything. They were just their normal selves running through town fighting this bugbear. And I love how we get to see the how the rest of the town acts. Like, oh yeah, this is a normal occurrence. It's kind of like, okay, what would it be like if you actually lived in Metropolis? Oh, yeah, another supervillain battle. Oh. Uh, what's the soup special today? To me, what's great about this episode is, you know, if, even if this wasn't stuff for the fans, the fact that it's focusing on people other than the main six, and it's a very kind of realistic portrayal of what's actually going on in a town that has to go through this, it makes it so it's like it's a great episode on its own. <laughs> well, it goes right back to the episode title, Slice of Life. That's the name for a type of series where you're just showing the everyday life of whomever. And it's just done so well. We've got all these little things. And like I said, not, even if it wasn't fan stuff, it's just, it gives more to the world. It's crazy. <laughs> and then you add in all the fan stuff. Derpy, Doctor Who's, the big Lebowski team, another sighting of Button Mash, more Luna and Celestia, frickin' Changeling in the guest audience. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I was just sitting there and all the little ponies were kind of like all the way over here. But um, here's a couple of things. We actually have the official names of these background characters now. The Doctor is just called Doctor. Derpy is actually officially now Muffins. That's her official name. So it's been changed again because it was Bubbles. I think they were playing around with stuff, but now it's officially Muffins. It's been announced several times and by the writing staff and Hasbro itself. And that's the brand that's going on all the toys now, so... And now we have Bon Bon, or Secret Agent Sweetie Drops. <laughs> and then we have Lyra, of course. Mm -hmm. Vinyl Scratch, and Octavia. Both of them are actually named that in the credits. <laughs> Not just DJ Pwn3 like she used to be named. <laughs> and there's a couple other ones that I didn't really pay attention to, because those are just the ones I was like, Oh, I like those ones! Oh, they're official now! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this episode just plays out really well. It's well done. And all the little nods, like Derpy with Dr. Hooves. We get to see pretty much every background character that got like two seconds of screen time in this episode. Yeah, well, you saw Barry Punch with the barrel of cider, right? Mm hmm. Uh, that reminds me, there's a scene where Vinyl Scratch and Octavia are riding their speaker set and they gather a bunch of ponies and then they went to say trip over the Twilight staff. Why is that even there? Because it can be. And they go flying and they do a couple of quick cuts back and forth between a bunch of different little scenes there. And there's a hidden frame in there of the staff wearing these horse heads that are apparently common. But during that, you actually, if you slow down and do frame by frame, you actually see that Barry Punch is like, Oh yeah, this is great! <laughs> yeah, Barry Punch is very excited with her entire keg of cider. And I don't think that frame was all that hidden because it was live action. It stood out. I was like, wait a minute, that's live action. There's like four or five characters in it. 
Uh, I didn't even notice it the first time I watched. It was actually it was actually pointed out to me several times in the chat room I hang out in, and then I went back and tried to find it, but I had to like figure out where it was because I was going by the YouTube time code, which is without commercials. So I had to like, okay, how much do I add to this to find out where it is? <laughs> so I did a lot of frame by framing in a lot of different sections, and eventually went, eh, this is probably the best section to look. There it is. Also, Stephen Magnet. <laughs> yes. And Gummy now has a voice. <laughs> And apparently is into existentialism. <laughs> There's a lot of callbacks in every episode this season so far. The part with Stephen Magnet, how he cuts off part of his mustache to help Cranky. Yes, and he does it by tearing off one of his own scales, which is nice for the reference. But dude, he's a sea serpent. Rarity did it because she needed something sharp. Stephen has claws. I love how you have to nitpick everything. It's great! At least it's better than, they completely ruined the Griffins! Do you really want to get back into that? Because I really like this episode. Nope! Moving on. <laughs> uh, speaking of callbacks, I mean. <laughs> so I want you to go over your favorite parts of this episode, then I'll drop in mine. Um, all of it? <laughs> and just uh... the way it ramps up. You know, we start with Matilda putting together a scrapbook. Oh, that's so sweet, all the memories. And then, then we get to the real issue. The invitations had the wrong date, but I scheduled the caterer and the flowers and the music and everything for tomorrow. But everyone's going to show up today. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? My first instinct was let everyone else know that the date is actually the next day. Well, nitpick here. If that was the problem, and everyone in Ponyville got the invitations, then wouldn't the caterer, and the musician, and the florist, and the seamstress all have gotten the invitations? And wouldn't they have gone, hmm, that's interesting, this wedding invitation that I RSVP'd to for Matilda and Cranky is on this day, but this wedding that I'm catering for Matilda and Cranky is the next day. Hmm, that's a slight nitpick. <laughs> that's two? Check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should put like some type of bar on the screen. How many nitpicks per episode? <laughs> but then nobody would be able to see your drawing. <laughs> I would use a really small font. <laughs> What's that black line at the bottom? <laughs> it keeps growing longer. <laughs> or you could just do a counter, like CinemaSins and, oh, I don't know, everyone else on the internet. <laughs> That's initially what I was thinking, but somehow you thought it was something else, so I was like, I'll just go with this. <laughs> well, it sounded more like you were doing prism marks, so. <laughs> that would be funny at first. I'm like, nope, scratch, and it just starts changing into numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice that they were getting married, but social norms, back to nitpicking, since you got me started. <laughs> looks like they already live together. <laughs> well, you say the best way to get to know someone before you marry them is to live together for a little bit. Yes, but and older social norms, that isn't the type of thing that you do. Mm. So just pointing out a trend in social norms and how social norms change. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even touch on the tradition of you're not supposed to see the bride on the wedding day. You guys already were messed up as soon as you found out the wedding was today because you guys found out when you were together. <laughs> uh, I also love the touch that Pinkie Pie was the wedding planner, but she can't help plan a wedding when there's a monster in town. <laughs> Just like Rarity can't help Dr. Hooves tailor his suit because she's fighting a bugbear. Then I liked how there were several references to that during the episode of other people being aware of it as a type of creature. It's like, well, a bugbear, that's unusual. <laughs> or Stephen going, what were you expecting, a bugbear? <laughs> like, was not expecting a sea serpent. Cranky didn't mention that you're Stephen Magnet. <laughs> I would also like to know how he managed to get inside the salon. Mm -hmm. By the way, that name comes from a uh, Google miss hearing something on the episode, and people associated that with the sea serpent. It said Stephen Magnet on the subtitles on YouTube. <laughs> it was nice to see him again. Mm -hmm. Though I went, dude, that was mean, man. You're supposed to be comforting her, not making her all anxious. That wasn't nice. And then that comment about everyone wearing their uncomfortable clothing. Absolutely no one was in gear except for Cranky and Matilda. Mira Mira was in her normal clothing. Everyone else was in their normal non-clothing. 
And wasn't it great how Celestia and Luna were interacting? It was like, oh my god, they're like real sisters. We need more of this. We do, and I'm sorry, you're freaking alicorns. You, one of you can't teleport as far as Canterlock, go pick up the gift and come back? That's exactly what I was thinking. Can't you just teleport the gift? I don't know. Ask one of your royal guards to go and get it? <laughs> you got the power, use it! <laughs> also, who are Cranky and Matilda that the two princesses of the whole kingdom come to your wedding, along with the princess of the Crystal Empire and her consort? <laughs> He always cries at weddings, just usually during the ceremony. <laughs> Which is funny, because I don't remember seeing him cry at all in Canterlot Wedding. Guess he was too busy getting married to cry. <laughs> and how many weddings have they gone to that she knows that? <laughs> and going back to the whole Canterlot Wedding thing, he was also being sucked dry. Yeah, but once we got through the whole power of love thing and expelled all the changelings, everybody was fine. You know, because magic that comes out of nowhere immediately heals you just like band-aids fix everything <laughs> you have massive internal bleeding and you'll probably die in the next couple hours just use band-aids they fix everything no no you're gonna die <laughs> band-aids don't fix everything and using a powerful magic attack even if you win and even if the power seem to come out of nowhere doesn't mean that you're automatically fine at the end of it oh but it's the power of love and we're getting off track moving on Oh my god, just that one part with the vinyl scratch and Octavia where they start rocking out and then, Oh god, I'm gonna be late! And the bass will be with you. <laughs> Use the bass! Uh, I really love that part where they were playing off each other and getting the music. Because it was like, okay, vinyl, what you're doing right now isn't working. Octavia, that is the most boring wedding march. It's the absolute traditional one. Play something else. So she plays something else, vinyl plays something else, and suddenly it's awesome. I'm like, that might be a little fast for a couple as, um, I was gonna say old, but with Cranky I'll just say rigid, a couple. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of that nice jab by the mayor in the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Nice way to break the tension. Nice way to break the tension, but if Celestia and Luna are there, why have the mayor do the ceremony? Why not just have Celestia do the ceremony? <laughs> because she has an appointment at two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, to have wedding cake. <laughs> Which was surprisingly intact after all that wonderfulness. Yes, well that's the thing with those layered cakes. In the cartoon universe they can come apart and go back together. But that was another callback to the Mystery Express because they were doing the same thing with the marzipan whatever. Meringue, marzipan, there was another M. Someone actually did the math to figure out how heavy that cake was. <laughs> It was heavy. No, but that was another callback in this episode. You know, the careful transport of the cake being interrupted and still managing to come out fine. And we got another look at Button Mash because we went through the arcade. And I like how they explain away how Bon Bon has different voices in different episodes. She's a secret agent and she blends into crowds. Yes, and Lyra's reaction of, wait, so our entire friendship is based on a lie? And then later, remember those oats you were saving? I ate them. Wow, it feels good to share your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> What's really funny is that's actually a reference back to a fan-made thing where she was actually talking about hands. <laughs> so they managed to squeeze in the reference about Lyra liking hands. What the heck? Damn you, smart writers. Damn you. <laughs> now, now, what came out was nice. So no, no cursing the smart writers. We need more smart writing. Uh. I was cursing them in that way of, we want more of this! We need more smart writers, otherwise we'll, all we'll keep getting is Spongebob. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Okay, I think it's about time to wrap up our thoughts on this episode. I liked how much the main six was excluded. You know, they were almost constantly in the background. And then they couldn't even make it into the building, because the door got slammed <laughs> in their faces and locked. And because they didn't want to ruin anything, they didn't like bang on the door demanding to be let in, or use unicorn magic to lift the bolts. They just stood outside the window and watched and went, oh, this is so precious. <laughs> and it was a nice lesson about not just defining yourself as a hero or a sidekick, you know, main character, side character. Everyone's the main character in their own life, and the side characters are of value. You know, every person who touches your life has an impact on it, so everybody's important. That was a nice lesson. 
course, in Ponyville, almost everyone is a positive impact on your life, unless your name's Diabinitiera or Silver Spoon. <laughs> but even the bad things can be positive in your life if you, if you let them be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I like this episode from beginning to end. I watched it like three times to try to catch everything. <laughs> And I'll probably watch it again after this, even though I wasn't reacting anywhere near as badly as my friends who was like, I'm completely ruined. I can never watch anything else again. This was so good. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the mildest guy in here when it comes to ponies. I thought it was good and cool and funny, but I'm not like, oh, my God. But guys, get a hold of yourselves. Well, I think it was just the whole fangasm of, oh my god, so many things we think of now that the collective consciousness accepts as canon are now kind of like there. Our lives have been given validity. <laughs> and what's really nice is this episode's mostly getting positive reactions from even the people who, who normally go, ah, that was so much fan pattering. They're like, actually, they're, they're actually like, no, that was actually a good episode on its own. It just happened to have a lot of fan pandering in it. <laughs> Well, the thing is, even if you take away the fan pandering, it wouldn't change the essential flow of the episode. So it was done in a way that it didn't alter the core metrics of the story. Mm -hmm. and overall, I liked it, I loved it, and I can't wait for more of this season. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like say I want more of this because too much of this would be a problem, but it was their 100th episode. Give them a break, guys. They were having fun. <laughs> They were having fun, and having an episode or two like this is fun. Doing every episode like this would be like reading the comic books all over again. Mm-hmm. Because this, this, in a way, was a thank you to everyone who watches who watched the show and actually helped it get to 100 episodes. Because it was never originally greenlit for this kind of length, and nobody, air quotes, nobody, believed it was going to have this kind of staying power. Maybe eventually we'll get to beat out Scooby-Doo. Reasons it was revealed that at one point season three was set to be the end of the series. But at the last moment, they were given the A-OK -okay that they were actually getting two more seasons. So we're like, oh, we got to rewrite the last episode of this season. Yes, and now we have to explain this whole princess thing and come up with a purpose for it instead of just getting to end with, yay, she's a princess. But hey, I've been OK with it so far. Season five has been solid. So cool. Can't wait for more. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 9, Slice of Life. Congratulations to creators, writers, and fans that we've reached 100 episodes of MLP FIM. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find him on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Want to keep up to date with what we're doing with these podcasts? You can follow us on Tumblr. Really like this podcast? Leave a friendly comment below. Also, this is YouTube, so please subscribe. Really, really like Lux's art and would like some of your own? He's currently open for commissions. All links in the description.